My name's David Bremner. Uh, my grandfather was Bunny Bremner, who was a flight sub-lieutenant in the Royal Naval Air Service in 1915. He served with number two wing RNAS and he flew a lot of different types of aircraft while he was there, but the favourite one was the Bristol Scout. He flew seven different Bristol Scouts, but this one, 1264, was his favourite. He was invalided home in the August of 1916 with malaria and dysentery and he brought home with him three souvenirs. They were the stick and the rudder bar and the magneto. After he died in 1983, we found them in his workshop and then in 2002 we tried to rebuild 1264 starting with those three bits and here she is finally completed. The Bristol Scout uh, is an important aircraft in aviation history. It tends somewhat to be overlooked, but at the outbreak of the war it was one of the two British aircraft that for the first time beat the French. They were acknowledged to be the best in the world. And when it went to war, it was not only fast, but it was also extremely manoeuvrable. So it, more than any other, was the one that was used to experiment with a single-seat fighter configuration. It wasn't designed to be armed, and in my granddad's case, the RNAS had just fitted the, the Lewis gun on the side of the fuselage here, firing through the propeller, but with no interrupter gear. And they accepted the fact that about one in 10 bullets would end up in your own propeller and they doped a strip of fabric onto the propeller here to try and stop the splinters coming off in your face, as Grandad used to say. My name is Theo Wilford, and though I have no uh, family connection with this aircraft at all, um, in fact I never came into contact with it until I met uh, David uh, when we were uh, building a, a different type of aircraft, and he then showed me the stick and the rudder for this. So I suggested to him, as I'd always wanted to build a First World War airplane, that we in fact rebuilt this aircraft. And well, he seemed to think that was a good idea, as did his brother. And so in 2002, the research work was started to basically get enough drawings together so we could build this authentically. That took quite a while, and we didn't actually start building the aircraft until 2008. And in fact, the first part I built was one of the wing ribs, which you can just about see through the fabric of the aircraft. So we had to learn quite a few new skills to build this, of course. The main one in my case was to learn how to splice the cables. And there's about 200 cable splices in this aircraft because the whole thing is basically held together by the, the wires. The other major problem we always knew was going to be a problem was to get hold of a genuine rotary engine. And we were very lucky that we were able to do a deal with TVAL, the New Zealand First World War aircraft company, for them to supply us with a 80 horsepower Lerone engine and we would supply them with the plans and metal bits and pieces so they could build one of these as well. Once we'd sourced those, we were really in a position to go ahead and really crack on and build the aircraft. Here is the end product and we're very proud of it and I think most people who've seen it are very appreciative of what we've done. I would also like to add that the Shuttleworth collection have been extremely helpful to us and the two people we'd really like to thank most are John Munn, the chief engineer who's helped us a lot, and Dodge Bailey, the chief pilot here, who has done most of the test flying for us. And so we're extremely uh, proud and happy to bring it here to this display today and to add it with all the other marvellous machines that are here at Shuttleworth and we feel that it fits in very well with their aircraft and uh, long may we keep uh, an association with them. We were very, very lucky to get this wonderful original 80 horse Lerone engine from the Vintage Aviator Limited in New Zealand. The project was reviewed by their uh, production manager, Gene DeMarco, uh, and he decided that because we were building the thing uh, as historically accurate as possible, uh, it was a project that they would be happy to support. Uh, one of the conditions was that uh, when, when the project was completed, he would like to do the initial test flight, and so that was done in July of this year. Gene sat in the aircraft, we had no information about it, we didn't know how it would fly, whether it would fly at all. He simply sat in it and flew it as if he'd been flying it all his life. It was the most astonishing, amazing experience. The first static exhibition was at Bista at their flywheel event and we were very lucky to get Sir George White to come and sign our propeller. Sir George is the grandson of the managing director of the British and Colonial Aeroplane Company that built this aircraft 
photographed originally and to have his signature on there endorses it as a proper Bristol product we feel.